Let's be real. People want what they can't get. It's one of the reasons why Americans dream about BMW, Mercedes, and Range Rover. These luxury brands exude prestige and exclusivity, while the reality is the average Joe will never own one. But today I'll tell you why you shouldn't buy these brands even if you have the money. By the way, a lot of time and research was done to put together this video, and I really want to know what you think. So while you're watching this, please comment below and share your thoughts. Let me tell you about the type of people who generally buy new cars from these brands. Typically, it's consumers with income that's much higher than normal. They don't care about car depreciation because resale value is not important to them. They want a nice, smooth ride. They desire comfort, design, and form. They love high-tech gadgets. Leather interiors and wood trims are a lifestyle. Now, if this description fits you, then yeah. Yes, typical buyer of a new BMW, Mercedes, or Range Rover. Not everyone wants an affordable, reliable car. Here's the thing about Toyotas. It's reliable and affordable, but it also has its trade-offs. The cabins are not the best in blocking out wind noise. The interior design is functional, but not refined, especially when you realize it feels so plasticky inside. Don't get me wrong, Toyotas are reliable, trusty cars, but obviously you can't expect luxury. So now if you're wanting reliability, but you also want a smooth ride, noiseless cabin, and upscale interior, well then, don't just jump over to luxury cars like BMW or Mercedes, even if you have the money. Instead, go for a premium brand like Lexus, Acura, or perhaps Infiniti. By the way, not many people know this, but Lexuses are mostly assembled in Japan. On the other hand, the BMW X3, X4, X5, X6, and X7 are all made in America. Currently, they come from the BMW Zentra manufacturing plant in Greer, South Carolina. Now, I'm not against American manufacturing. I'm just going by stats and experience. And the stats show that Japanese manufacturing and build quality is more reliable than American. But let's jump back to BMW. Let me explain the difference between BMW, BMW M, and BMW M Sport. I'll also explain the difference between Mercedes versus Mercedes AMG. The standard BMW comes with a range of advanced and luxury features like premium audio system, leather upholstery, and advanced safety technology, smartphone integration, and more. The BMW M Series takes it a step further. The M Series includes a range of sporty cosmetic and performance upgrades. Think things like larger wheels, a more aerodynamic body, sport-tuned suspension, unique grille, and sportier exhaust tips. Take a look at popular M Series models like the M3, M5, and M8. Now, many people know this, but the BMW M division was originally designed for BMW's racing and rallying teams. We're talking about high performance here. The letter M in BMW M stands for motorsport. Anyway, that's why the M Series cars feature many dramatic upgrades compared to the standard BMW. And with that, of course, includes higher pricing than the standard BMW. The BMW M Series is specifically manufactured, tested, and tuned in BMW's private facility at the Nürburgring Racing Circuit in Germany, which means each BMW M Series vehicle is overseen by top German engineers and mechanics. These vehicles are built for racing, so they're fast. And by fast, I mean really fast. For example, the 2021 M8 Competition Coupe can accelerate from 0 to 60 in 3 seconds flat. Then there's BMW M Sport vehicles. These offer sportier styling and some performance upgrades to standard BMW models. I'm talking things like M Sport suspension, M Sport brakes, M Sport aerodynamic bodywork, larger wheels, and its own special badging. At the sides, there are M badges on the front wheels, deep skirts below the doors, and around the back, the bumper is also deeper. M Sport interiors also come with a thicker steering wheel with an M logo at the bottom, metallic or carbon fiber effect dashboard trim, metal pedals and door sill panels with an M Sport logo. The M Sport package also means enhancements to the engine, transmission, and chassis. There's a catch though. Because of lower suspensions and low profile tires, M Sport's models generally aren't as comfortable. That said, the M Sport doesn't offer the same level of performance enhancements as the BMW M Series vehicles. If you're wondering what's the difference between a standard Mercedes versus a Mercedes AMG, well, you'll see the cosmetic and performance difference. AMG represents the highest standard of Mercedes Benz, whether it's the slick styling of the AMG line trim or the impressive power of an AMG engine. Signature parts that add to the AMG's line sportier look include things like man made leather seats, flat bottom steering wheel, and a diamond grill. You may also see features like defined stitching in the upholstery, stainless steel pedals, AMG branded floor mats, and so forth. Believe it or not, most AMG engines are handcrafted by a single engineer whose signature can be found on the car once it's completed. If anything, an AMG vehicle can be identified just by the sound alone. Its powerful engines go from a four-cylinder turbo to a powerful V12. Most Mercedes-Benz models have AMG variants. 
But here's why you shouldn't buy a Mercedes in general. For starters, the moment you buy a Mercedes, you're talking about an immediate depreciation in value. Now, I know what you're thinking, Scotty, don't all cars depreciate in value when you buy them? Well, here's the thing. Mercedes cars typically depreciate faster than any other car brand. Another challenge with the Mercedes is that certain models need specialized tools and technicians who are specifically trained to work on them. This means much higher cost than you might expect. If you think you can beat the system by going to an alternative third-party shop, well, I'm telling you right now, that's not a smart idea as it is. Reason is, you can end up losing the warranty on the vehicle completely. Repairing the Mercedes isn't cheap. You can end up spending up to a thousand bucks on a simple maintenance routine like an oil change. And the more you use the car, the bigger and more expensive the repair issues will be. You might think or hope that spending thousands of dollars on repairs will add to the car's resale value. But in reality, all it'll end up doing is convincing potential buyers that you're trying to sell them a lemon that had very expensive repairs done so far. Now, if you think buying a used Mercedes is a better option, well, think again. Even if the sticker price of the used car sounds doable for your wallet, who need a luxury car is anything but. If you buy a Mercedes with an expired warranty, that means any repair costs will be coming right out of your pocket. Or even if it's still covered under warranty, it's not without risk. That's because the car can still come with problems that may not be covered under warranty. Don't even get me started on trying to find parts for a late model Mercedes. If you live in a small town without a dealership, any random local garage most likely won't have these parts in stock. Sure, you can buy the parts online, but depending on the parts you need, there may be model variations. Not just any average Joe can buy the right parts online, especially when it comes to an old their model Mercedes. Speaking of parts, Mercedes-Benz recommends that only OEM or official Mercedes-Benz parts are used for its cars during maintenance or repairs. But of course, these extra special parts come with extra special high prices. Here's another thing most people don't know. Mercedes-Benz has some unusual system codependencies. What I mean is, you're paying for luxury, but the rear of your camera doesn't work unless the radio's turned on. Or here's another example. Your car will automatically shift into park when the passenger doors are open at speeds lower than five miles an hour. True, some of these codependencies are there for safety purposes, but most of them are just illogical and plain annoying. Anyway, all this is to say that there are reliable alternatives to the Mercedes and cheaper alternatives too. I'd say the same for BMW. Over the decades, BMW has built a reputation of crafting premium, sporty, luxury cars. But lately, critics have been complaining that the Bavarian brand cars are becoming cheap. And by that, I'm not talking about price, but rather cheap quality. Because of this, reselling your BMW is getting more difficult and ends up as a bigger loss than owners expect. For example, one study found that a new 2021 BMW 530i with an MSRP is $55,000. But a used one right now is about $33,600. That's nearly $20,000 loss in value. To put it in perspective, price drop on competitive 2021 models from Mercedes-Benz and Audis is around $15,000, which is bad enough. Here's the thing. Luxury cars are notorious for losing resale value faster than other vehicles. More complicated features and elements mean the vehicle is harder to repair and maintain as the older it gets. This is especially a problem when it comes to BMWs. Now, that said, some BMWs, however, are the slight exception to the rule, like the Series 1 M Coupe, which is known to retain its value even after several years. It comes down to two factors, having iconic status and being rare. Now, BMW repair costs also do not come cheap. BMW parts are expensive, and any spare parts you purchase from BMW dealership will likely come with a steep price tag, too. One study surveyed brands like BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Cadillac, and Audi. Of these luxury brands, researchers found that BMW owners can spend $17,800 over 10 years to maintain and repair their vehicles. That's more than any other brand surveyed. Owning a BMW also means that you need to be prepared to pay more for labor and your synthetic oil changes, too. BMWs are engineered for driving enthusiasts. This means specialized and sophisticated technology that requires specialized certification to repair properly. And that's going to cost you big time. By the way, this past November, news broke about a massive BMW recall. I'm talking 155,000 vehicles that were recalled. This list includes 2010 to 2012 model years of the 1 Series Coupes and Convertibles, 6 Series Coupes and Convertibles, and 3 Series Sedans and Convertibles. It also includes 2010 to 2011 model years of the 3 Series Wagons and Coupes, 5 Series Sedans X3, X5, and X6 SUVs, and Z4 Convertibles. The problem had to do with aluminum bolts in the variable camshaft timing adjustment unit. BMW calls this setup Vanos instead of variable valve timing like everyone else. This specific part of the vehicle helps determine when the engine's valves open and close. If for whatever reason the bolts break prematurely, the vehicle could stall while moving. And if that happens, it could cause the vehicle to crash. If the bolts in your vehicle ever were to fail, there are other symptoms you might notice. For example, usually one of the first things you might notice is the engine runs rough and loudly, and the warning lights turn on on the instrument cluster below the steering wheel. Your car 
car's engine might also start to operate at reduced power. Across all the recalled vehicles, BMW found that the aluminum bolts for the housing of the variable camshaft timing adjustment unit on the intake and exhaust camshafts could loosen and even break over time. BMW's solution to the problem is to have its dealerships replace these faulty bolts for free. Believe it or not, some of these recalled vehicles could have already been included in a prior recall from 2014. Or they could have aged out of an extended warranty program from BMW. If for some reason you happen to own one of these and you're already paid to fix the problem before the recent recall was issued, you could be eligible for reimbursement from BMW. By the way, when the recall was issued, BMW said it wasn't aware of any crashes or injuries related to this issue to date. Anyway, all this is to say, if you're not rich, don't buy a new BMW. But if you're hard set on buying a used BMW, don't buy one without a warranty. But honestly, if you want something that's reliable, you have extra cash to afford something more than standard and functional, then go for a premium brand like Lexus. But now you tell me, did anything from this video surprise you? And what's your opinion about BMW and Mercedes cars? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.